matter when I started, I was gonna have the support from them. And since it was a passion for me, I took it more as an opportunity to start early. Life's a short and precious thing. Sweet like honey and it sure can sting. Sure can sting. Thank you for joining us for this edition of the She Dreams in Color video series. I am joined today by someone I am honored to have here in the studio. Yari Guzman is the pastry chef entrepreneur, wait, dessert chef entrepreneur <laughs> and yeah. owner of Dariella's Sweet Taste. And I have followed Yari for a couple years now, believe it or not, her yeah. business for a couple of years. Yari, thank you so much for being here with me today to talk about your occupation as a dessert chef entrepreneur. I can't say it, but you can explain it. So let's talk about your occupation. First of all, how old are you? I'm 14. I'm about to be 15 in March. <laughs> okay. And now after a while, people are not allowed to ask you that, okay? But for right now, I think in all fairness, how old you are really matters for this conversation yeah. and your occupation. And I say occupation because you are an entrepreneur, right? Yeah, I am. Talk to me about your business. How long have you owned it? What in the world? <laughs> <laughs> well, I've owned I've owned it since um, March of 2020 when the pandemic hit and um, it's been a passion for me since I've been little. So it's turned more into a hobby. Well, as well getting paid doing that hobby and it's been fun it's been a new adventure to start off with and I've had love and support from everybody so March 2020 tell me how you got into your business how does that happen when you're so young well um, I went to an entrepreneurship school Ace Academy and they've always taught us about entrepreneurship about how everybody can own their own business and like I said, I've always liked baking. And as well, for my birthday of that year, 2020, I got a KitchenAid and I ended up, my mom ended up pushing me to be able to um, use it for good and take out the goodness in it. So work it out pretty much. And um, ever since that, I've actually been starting it. And that's been the reason why, because I've always wanted to be a baker. So yeah. Okay, so tell me when you first started feeling like being a baker, being a dessert chef would be something you wanted to do. Um, well, I don't think there's really an age because it's been since I was young. Oh. So, yeah, ever since I was little, I've never really liked playing with toys, like being with other kids and playing with dolls. I've always liked being in the kitchen with or my grandma or my mom. It's always been in the kitchen, no matter what. I've liked being in there, helping out, making new stuff and all of that. So um, when did you start gravitating towards the dessert side? Because, you know, sometimes girls are in the kitchen with their families and um, learning the recipes and handing it down and helping out. I was always a dishwasher in my kitchen and I got to peel potatoes and grate cheese. I don't know how you got so lucky. <laughs> but when did you start leaning towards the dessert side of things? I... I, you know, I've never really thought about that. Like, I, it happened in seconds, pretty much, because, well, we normally, it wasn't much dessert. It was mainly just dinner and lunch and all of that stuff. So I think it just happened, like, watching people do it and seeing all the different colors, all the oh. different um, techniques, all the designs. It was, like, so interesting seeing all of that. So I guess it started calling my attention, and I ended up starting to practice it. I love that. And even just the way you talk about it is so romantic. <laughs> the colors and the designs and the techniques. Um, baking and desserts really do have such a wide range of opportunity for you, you yeah. know, to learn and um, also um, to express yourself through your dessert. Much sexier than pot roast. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, this is a meatloaf. <laughs> So um, talk to me about uh, how you get into, uh, you said you went to Ace Academy Charter School. Yes. How did you make that decision to go to a charter school that focuses on entrepreneurship? Well, to be honest, I didn't really focus on the entrepreneurship part. Um, we were just looking for a small school, like with not many people. And my parents had friends that had their kids going there. They were like, it's a really great school. So um, I was leaving um, fifth grade, so elementary school. And we were like well let's try it out for middle school and since they have middle school and elementary school it went well since my siblings were in elementary school and we all moved there um and it was like something new it was a fresh start there was new people and the 
vibe there and everybody was just different from going to a regular school and the first year we went it was a bit hard for us because it was like oh okay so I, I didn't know it worked this way but then the second year um and now that I'm out of there it's like we had a lot of support from that school it was a lot of love a lot of caring and everybody was family it was union with everybody and the way they taught it was like um so it was more of a passion of them teaching us how to be entrepreneurs than just going there and be like um an education you got to have an education so i guess that was what made me open up more and as well other students that i know that have a business that we all just open our minds to owning that because of the teachers that pushed us there well you're very very lucky to have that and and to even recognize that those teachers had a passion for it and weren't just checking off a a syllabus and giving you some homework and going home that's so beautiful and those are important years it was fifth sixth seventh and eighth um sixth seventh and sixth seventh and eighth grade those are so important for development too (laughs) yes so then you start this new school you're figuring out how this crazy place works. Um, When did you start getting into entrepreneurship? When did that kind of say, hmm, this might kind of be for me? We had to take the class of Mm -hmm. entrepreneurship. And it all started off with, um, they taught us about the history of entrepreneurship. They showed us the first monopoly in the United States. So it started off first like that. And then they slowly went teaching us techniques and stuff like that. But about me starting my own business, it was like, I've always wanted that. I've always wanted to start my business as a baker because I was like, I want my own stuff. I want to do it by myself. I want to be boss of it. So I guess that's always been uh, my attention, but I never really, I didn't know what it was called. I was like, I want my business. But once I went there, they started talking to us about it. I was like, oh, so that's what I'm going to be, an entrepreneur. So pretty much it just went like, I was already looking for it without knowing what it was. And once I went there, they just opened up a door and they just kept pushing us to know what it was called, how to be, de- how to develop it. And I guess that's how it really just went. You are making my heart melt. <laughs> you really are what you're saying. So a lot of people your age, you know, the sixth, seventh and eighth grade um, would say, when I grow up, I want to be what in the world made you take this step to do it now? I think the love and the support I had from my family. Like, I already knew that no matter when I started, I was going to have the support from them. And since it was a passion for me, um, I took it more as an opportunity to start early. And since it's something I have liked to learn more about, um, I like seeing, uh, watching shows about it and stuff like that. So I, as well, like I said, my mom pushed me to do it as starting off early because there's no early time, no, and you're never too young or too late to be able to do it. So, yeah. Now, have you found some obstacles with your age in this process? Yes, one of the main ones has been um, balancing my time with the schoolwork and as well um, being able to like find the difference of working and doing the schoolwork. Mm -hmm. That was one of my hardest parts because of Zoom. Zoom was at home, so it was like I had school and work at home. And I guess that was the harder part, being able to balance out when I had to do my schoolwork and when I had to do um, the desserts and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It must've been difficult to choose because you're like history or make a cake (laughs) and make money. (laughs) Yeah, it was, it was really hard. I, um, I remember all my teachers telling me we need you in class, but I was there. I was on zoom like all the time, but I wasn't like, my head wasn't there. Like it was like that. And all the teachers ace academy well the majority of them have their own business so it was like they understood how it was having to go to school well not go to school but like teach and versus being um in their own place having their uh, yeah. own um adventure with their businesses so i guess they understood that part but they also wanted me to learn how to discipline myself with time mm-hmm. so the majority of my teachers gave me um, extensions. They were like, we'll give you an extension of a day or two. And 
but they were like, you won't get this in high school. So I guess me having that opportunity made me think, I was like, I know I won't get it in high school, but I have to take advantage of it now that I have it. So I was like, now that they're pushing me to actually learn how to do it, let me start doing it so I can do it when I'm in high school. And as well, it helped out now that I'm in school, like actually in school, that I do my work in school. And once I'm home, I'm done for the day with schoolwork. Yeah. So then once I'm home, it's like family time or baking, yeah. Yeah, either one. And as well, I go to church. So it was that it, those three things were my pri are my priority when I'm home. I am very much older than you. <laughs> and I am currently learning balance. I'm currently struggling with the balance because I love my job. It makes money, but I have to stop. You have to stop. Sometimes you have other responsibilities. You have family, you have yourself that you have to take care of. So what a great lesson for you to kind of learn in the beginning of your uh, entrepreneurship and, and at the beginning of your life to learn how to make that balance. You know, what are some tools or techniques that you have to, shut down to be present to um well to be honest I've never really thought about it but I just try to be um I know that school is only f for a short amount of time I mean I know I'm gonna keep on learning but once I'm done with high school and I graduate I'm gonna have time for anything because me baking and having my own business it's on my time so I guess I thought about that I'm like well let me just get school aside um, once I'm done with it I'm gonna go on to what I like I'm gonna go on to what I want to do and that's what I've always thought of like once I'm done with it I'll be able to do what I want mm -hmm. so and as well, um, I've been pushed. I've been pushed to be able to complete it. I know, And I'm like, I know I can, so why not do it? So I've always had that in my mind. I know I can, and I know I can do it. Mm -hmm. And what about balancing family and church and I'm sure friends your, and your own personal downtime? How are you managing those elements that are have to be pulling you and everything seems so important, but you have to prioritize? How are you doing that? When I'm at church, it's like I'm with my family. So I guess that helps a lot. And I know, um, well, my friends are at church and we've all grown up together and when we're out once church is done it's like we're together and we have our certain times and as well with my family other than being at church it's like we hang out a lot we've been close and they all help me with the business and sometimes the business isn't really like work it's more like something that helps to, for as a distraction so I guess that's what's really I've learned how to like even now what each thing means to me mm -hmm. and all of them may be priorities but I know like at the same time they're all together yeah. for me I think that's the answer isn't it <laughs> yeah that you are surrounding yourself with things that nurture and feed the things that are important to you and they're all kind of integrated yeah so you don't have friends who are pulling you in a, a different direction from your goals and your priorities um, that seems to be the lesson because <laughs> I have things going in a bunch of different places and as I'm listening like her life is kind of like in a circle. So that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. And they all nurture and feed each other and they know what's important to you. You've communicated what's important to you and they want you to win. Yeah. Believe it or not, you'll probably encounter people who don't want you to win. You've got to eliminate those uh, relationships quickly. <laughs> don't let them bring you down. <laughs> uh, that was a hard lesson I had to learn in, in entrepreneurship. Everyone in your life doesn't support that goal and that dream that you have. Um, and you're so fortunate to be supported by people who love you and are encouraging you and want to see you win. Yeah. Yeah. How are you benefiting from school? Because I only know this from movies. <laughs> <laughs> Everything I know I learned in a movie. But how are you benefiting from high school right now? Are you struggling to see value in high school because you could just own a business and be successful? I like it because it's a new it's a new start and it's something everybody has their own experience and the teachers there the teachers I've had already have been really nice to me they've I I love my teachers just knowing the fact that um, I have those benefits of knowing the stuff I'm learning and I mean I like school but at the same time I don't so I love math 
and math helps me because of money so being and as well reading reading helps me learning how to read contracts and all of that so i guess i'm like if i finish school people will know that i graduated with the credits i have so i guess i have that in mind i i graduate and i have those credits of people knowing what i've already done yori you're blowing my mind <laughs> I wish I knew in high school what I would use it for. I would have paid a lot more attention. I would have been in algebra like, I'm going to use this when I do my taxes in 2021. <laughs> this is really cool that you're able to take where your future is going into the classrooms you're in right now. And I imagine that you look at everything through the lens of I'm owning my own business as a dessert chef. Yeah, I really, I, I guess that's how I see stuff. I'm like, I own my own business and I know if I do this, this is gonna help. So I try to help like think about it in that way. It's because I know it's gonna be for my benefit. Oh my God, I am just, I really, <laughs> Hearing you talk about it is is just so even more overwhelming from what I already knew about you following your journey the past couple of years. So what has been the hardest part of owning your own business for the past couple of years? <laughs> um, well, there hasn't really been much of a hard part yet. So, I mean, I know it's going to get difficult at one point, but there hasn't. you're taking one step at a time and yeah. you're processing one step at a time nice and what about your customer base how are they receiving you like do you a lot of people book you because you're young and you have great products or are they surprised you're young what is that like for customers um a lot of people book me because one for the support of my age and they know that i'm capable of doing it and a lot of a lot of them have seen me grow so it's like seeing them seeing me now it's like we knew you could do it and i know that you can still do it so it's been support from them one it's been that and then other a lot of them have tried from where i started from where i've gone now and all of them enjoy the stuff i make so i guess that has helped out a lot i mean it helps tremendously <laughs> that you make delicious stuff and it's beautiful uh what about your your wins what are some great wins that you had i remember when you made for your grandfather i think it was a hundred percent cake for someone with diabetes yeah you know and and you were really happy about that what are some wins that you've had in this journey um well one of them was that being able to make my grandpa a cake that i hadn't made in he hasn't he hadn't eaten one in a while so and plus it was from his granddaughter so him not being able to eat one and for his granddaughter to make one for him to be a hundred percent for a person with diabetes it was like it brought joy to me being able to be the first one and being creative about it knowing that he can't eat it and i've learned how to make banana bread as well for um diabetes people with diabetes and um i guess the other part has been um being able to make wedding cakes because that isn't easy that's stressful it's like oh my god i hope it doesn't fall like things like that it's like once you're when you're doing it i, I have fun with it but at the same time it's nerve-wracking because you're like what if it goes wrong what if something happens but I'm like, people have actually given me the chance to make something big, like in a huge occasion. And I guess that has helped me out. And it's been something that has been like, wow, I was able to make something like that. I was able to do it. So I guess that's one thing. Those are the main things, wedding cakes and making a diabetic cake. I would like to suggest that if a wedding cake falls, that is officially a good luck sign for that where that wedding, that marriage. All right, let's just tell them. If your cake falls over, guess what? Good luck. And you have to scream, yay, that means you're going to be married forever. <laughs> let's see if it catches on. <laughs> so I uh, love how it sounds like you like tackling challenges as, as intimidating as they are. You like taking on new challenges. Yeah, I really do. Um, and there's been pretty hard like there's been moments where I'm like oh my gosh I really just did that that wasn't supposed to go that way but then I'm like I know I can redo this so I have to scrape everything off and I restart like there was this one time I was making a cake where it was like 
I don't like it no more. So I scraped the whole top off and I redid the whole top. And my mom was like, that looks way better. <laughs> so there's been moments where I'm, that I have a difficult time, but it's like, it looks better now. I was able to fix it. I did it. So yeah. And that's what makes you a true expert in your field <laughs> is when you can have a problem, you can have a mistake, you can have an issue the expert comes in and fixes that thing and, and makes it flawless or makes it seem seamless to the outsider, which is exactly what you are as after two years of owning your own business. So what are your future goals with this? So we know you want to continue owning your own business. What do you see your, where do you see yourself being with this? Um, well, I want to be able to own a own bakery, my own bakery. I want to, um, well, at one point, extend it, have not just one, have a variety. And I want to be able to um, think and know that people depend on me for special moments. And as well, I want people to know that I've worked hard and I've had a lot of years of experience doing that for quite um, being able to do that for quite quite a while. And as well, I want to be able to have the education to learn um, what type of foods to give and stuff like that. What are the main allergies and things like that. So then after high school, more education would include nutrition education and even being able to extend out into the chemistry of things with uh, foods for diabetics or foods for people with allergies and things like that. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. And then do you have a focus on some sort of specific training for pastry chefs or dessert chefs? Yeah, I want to do pastry chef. I want to go to Paris to study for that because, well, I know they it may be on TV, but the way it shows on, in France, it's like they give a passion for baking they take their time it's elegant it look, it tastes delicious like even though it was made here but it's really good like just tasting it here it's good I can't imagine tasting it over there so I guess that's one thing that I want to be able to do go to Paris get more um learn more about it learn more about it in a place I know that they do their best and um being over there um I want to like bring back what I know and bring it here. And as well, um, well, I'm Hispanic, so I wanna travel in Hispanic places, Honduras, Guatemala, and places like that to bring as well some of that Hispanic heritage to myself and my business. That is beautiful, that is so beautiful. And you have so much ahead of you. I'm thinking into your future about how awesome it's gonna be for you to have this international experience. You can bring your own culture, your own style, your own signature to these dishes. And the, I mean, the sky's the limit for you. You could create a whole new dessert that marries your background with your travels mm -hmm. and I mean, you could do anything with it. It's really exciting. It is. It, I've always thought about it. I'm like, when I go here, I'm going to be able to bring this back and I'm going to be able to create something new. And everybody's just going to be like, wow, it's a whole bunch of different cultures mixed in one thing. Right. I mean, someone had to invent flan. It came from something. It came <laughs> from someone's kitchen, right? And then we all caught on to it and it just got passed something around. Something good. Yeah. This is so exciting. I cannot wait to see where your your business takes you, where your experiences and education take you. Uh, and do you have something for 2022 that you will be focusing more on for your business that people can look out for? Well, I want to be able to make sure that for those special holidays, especially um making not fruit like strawberries dipped in chocolate arrangements well things that include chocolate because who doesn't like chocolate so i want to be able to do stuff like that um pretzels dipped in chocolate rice krispies dipped in chocolate strawberries and then apples dipped in chocolate and as well cake pops so all all of that has chocolate in it and a lot of people like that so and it's something that it's sweet but at the same time it has an elegant look once it's really good it's prepared correctly. Do you have a lot of trial and error with this? You're you're dipping apples. It doesn't work. You, you get mad. Everybody in your house gets <laughs> to eat it. <laughs> the one thing, water and chocolate do not go well. So okay. if you do not dry up, dry up the fruit well, 
it's gonna screw up the chocolate really badly so sometimes i've had to throw away chocolate because i mixed it up with water and it just gets really bad it gets like chunky like that and as well um having to burn up like i've melted once i melt the chocolate if i leave it in the microwave for too long it burns so having to do that i also got to throw it away but there's been moments where um i've had strawberries where i'm like i don't like the design and i can't redo it no more i i give it to them i'm like you can keep it it's whatever <laughs> but yeah there's been moments where i'm like i don't like it to give it so i redo it and i give what I didn't like to my family. So what is the the recipe, the dessert that you're not making? I'm not making that. I know that people might want it, but I'm not making it. I don't like it. It's not my thing. There's one that everybody asks for are meringue cookies. Those, my whole family, everybody, a lot of people, they're like, when are you going to make some? I'm like, mm-mm. I'm not going to make it again. I made it once. A lot of people tried it and they loved it because of how it melts in your mouth. It's crispy on the outside. And once you put it in your mouth, it's it just melts. And I'm like, I'm not going to make it again. As much as you beg for it. I'm Why? Not. What happened? I, I don't know. Um, Well, since it's like made out of egg whites, you have to whip it. If you over whip it, you're done. And as well, the time it takes in the oven, it takes up to two hours and a half to bake. And it's on 200 deg degrees. So I'm like, it's a lot of time having to wait there, uh, making sure that the wet egg white doesn't over whip and then having to put it in the oven and wait that amount of time. No, I'm not doing that. <laughs> not on the menu. <laughs> yep. All right. No meringue cookies on the menu. <laughs> yeah. You, you, it's almost like you messed up the first time by doing them really good and everyone loving them. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, why did I have to do such a good job? <laughs> So a good time. marketing technique was would be just check the website, check the website. <laughs> and now all these people will keep going to your website. You'll get a lot of traffic. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Well, when we go back to your obstacle of balance, it sounds as if you're doing an incredible job of being a business owner, being a young person, growing up. You still have the job of growing up to do, <laughs> which, you know, I know we never stop learning and growing up, but you're in like high gear years of a lot of stuff coming at you, um, high school and family and all of that. And you're doing such a phenomenal job. So I hope that you're able to keep practicing your balance. So you make time for yourself. That's definitely one thing I've learned as an entrepreneur. You got to have time for Yari. You got to have downtime and relaxation time and, um, but what a blessing that you have found your passion and your calling so yeah. early in your life. That has honestly been one of the best things, like being able to do gain money from something I like doing. It's like I don't have stress about like, oh, I got to do this and I don't want to. It's like it relaxes me. I don't know. I've always found that fascinating, being able to help somebody um, while as well me doing something I like. Now, tell me one of the experiences you had where you were part of someone's celebration or someone's event that you just remember how that made you feel. For me, the first time I actually felt like that was the first wedding cake I made because it was like it was last year um, around April. I was at first. Actually, I'm going to be honest with you. When I started my business, I was not going to concentrate on cakes. Because I was like, I'm not ready for that. I'm going to just concentrate on strawberries and that's it. But then people were like, can you try to make me a cake? And I was like, I'll try. But I'm, I can't guarantee anything. And I started trying. And a lot of people ended up going to that party. I think that was actually one other than the wedding. Um, that was the first time I was like, oh, my gosh, people liked it. I did not expect that. But um, that day, I remember that. Um, the day before I had made it, me and my dad were running around the everywhere, or every store. We were like, what do I need? What do I need to buy? And it was just that. It was like, I didn't know what to do. The, um, she was like, it's for my five-year-old son. I, to be honest, I guess since it was my first time decorating, um, they said that they liked it. I looked at it and I was like, hmm, <laughs> not so much. <laughs> but, but the, um, the, 
the flavor of it, I guess that's what caused more of the attention. They were like, you love it and you like doing it and you can taste the love and passion for it. So they, everybody, everybody that tried it liked it. I was like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then um, everybody's just like started asking, can you make me a small cake? Um, it slowly went up from just, it's only us at home to we're having a party of 60 people people and then it just slowly went rising so <clears throat> it started off like that like people just started um they tried it at one place and it just slowly went developing and i guess it made an impact on me i was like um i under as underestimated myself from being able to do it and other people actually believed in me and being able to do it so i guess that was one one of the biggest things for me and then you also were able to, from a business sense, say, well, if you like it, the prices just went up, right? <laughs> yeah, I've actually had to do that. Like at first I was giving myself, um, it was a really low price. It was like, well, I'm just starting, so let me go low. But I've slowly gone up and people, some people don't like, they're like, okay, we'll get it. It doesn't matter the price. Um, just let me know how much it is and we'll buy it for you. So there's some people that will be like, um, are you available on this day? I'm like, yeah, I am. And they're like, I want a cake for this amount of people with this filling, um, <clears throat> vanilla flavor with this type of decoration. And I was like, okay, sounds good. And they'll be like, um, just let me know how much it is and we'll get it. Like, that's how it is. I'm like, okay. So I've had to low, um, slowly gain, put a bit more on the prices because it's, it takes time to be able to do that. It takes patience. And as well, it's like something that is not easy to like just give. It's, it's something I've worked for. So. Yeah. And a talent. You yeah. have a talent that deserves to be compensated. <laughs> yes. And when you have demand like that, I, I always tell folks, you should have a few people who say you're too expensive. <laughs> Otherwise, you're not too expensive. You're not you're not priced right. <laughs> you know, if you're getting a lot of people who are like, oh, gosh, it's too much. You might want to check it out. But if, a, if everyone's like, yeah, no problem. That's, that's kind of a red flag. You might be too affordable. <laughs> but that's not including the cakes I purchase. <laughs> Well, Yari, I have really, really enjoyed sharing this conversation with you and learning from you as an <laughs> entrepreneur, how you just seem to take it like with a grain of salt and you are tackling these challenges. And I really appreciate you coming here today and sharing your story. And I can't imagine, I can't imagine the people that you're going to inspire with your story. You're 14 years old. You've owned your business for almost two years, right? Yeah, almost two years. That's amazing. Congratulations. <laughs> thank thank you. you for being here. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. It's been a really good experience. It was it's fun being able sorry. It's fun being able to talk to you and be here. The crew you have here is really nice and sweet. <laughs> thank you. We work really hard to have all women supporting women, telling everyone, you know what, you can do it. You can do it. And you are an incredible example of like you can you can do it. And I'm, I'm excited to see where you go. Thank you. With every episode of the She Dreams in Color video series, we like to have a t-shirt that amplifies the person we just interviewed. And Yari clearly has such a bright future ahead of her. And she started so early. This t-shirt, it says her story in the making, is by Sisterhood Designs. And it's twin sisters that make these t-shirts. And their mission is to motivate young women to find their personal talents. It's our turn Won't let it burn It's our turn